If you could suplex any animal, what okay. would it be? It'd have to be a beaver. <laughs> Why a beaver? Why not a beaver? If out of context jackass clips and Looney Tunes shorts have taught me anything, it's that you don't fuck with an animal with horns on its head. A lesson famed cowboy Bill Pickett apparently never learned. Given that, he basically invented a sport that involved wrestling them to the ground. So tell us a little about Bill Pickett. Well, he was the second child of former slaves and he basically spent his entire early life honing his body into a weapon of bovine destruction, leaving like formal education in grade five to work as a ranch hand, where he spent much of his time observing the various animals that, you know, bumbled around the farm and called it their home. And all this knowledge and experience eventually turned Bill Pickett into a man some would call, get this, the dusky fucking demon. Which is a badass fucking monarch here for anybody. But even more badass than he was also a cowboy who suplexed bulls. The sport of cow suplexing yes. sounds pretty badass. Mm -hmm. Why have I never seen it on TV? No, because it's not really a thing anymore. It's mostly limited to like rodeo shows, but Pickett is noted as being the man who invented this sport, and he did so because when he was working as a ranch hand, he would observe the various animals, and he noticed that in particular, longhorn steers proved to be especially difficult for ranch hands, like himself and others that he observed, to control, so, which is hardly ideal when you're talking about an animal that has like horns on its head that wouldn't look out of place in a monster hunter game. It looks like something you see roaming around in an RPG in an area you're not supposed to be in. It's like, do you ever see like the Dark Souls cow? No. You heard about this? The like, um, a couple, like, I think months ago now, there was like this random giant cow that appeared from nowhere. Did you not hear about it? We'll put the picture in behind me and you'll look. It's typing on your like, laptop right now. It's type in giant cow found. You found it? You found the giant cow? Yeah, just give this computer a minute to actually load. <laughs> you found the giant cow, Brad. Wait, wait. Oh my god. Just scroll it from the. I can see the top of the cow. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> There's the reaction. That's a real cow, by the way. I it's, like how the, the, the caption underneath this picture says, Knickers, which is the name of the cow, yes. is two inches taller than Hollywood star Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> yeah, Knickers is a Holstein Frisian, and um, he's, uh, he's around about the, uh, we think he's around about seven years of age. And we're, he's estimated weight uh, somewhere around the, the, the 1,400 kilos. That, it looks like a Photoshop that you'd ask me to do. Well, it's funny you should mention that, Brad, because let's take a step back from, like, you know, Bill Pickett for a moment, and... Obviously, as like the guy who invented cow wrestling, steer wrestling, let's turn that giant ass cow into an opponent worthy of this man. So we should now have a picture of this big ass cow behind me. And Brad, how do we make this a worthy opponent for Bill fucking Pickett, the dusky demon? Well, it's a big cow, but I feel like it could be bigger. It could, yes. So what I'd like to do now for me is show that cow now cresting over a mountain, like don't Mount Fuji, like you see like in fucking um, Pacific Rim. When you just see like the giant fucking monsters like cresting over a mountain top with smoke and lightning around them. So do that. That's not enough to scare the dusky demon because like we're talking about Bill fucking Pickett here. So Brad, make this cow scary, starting with some horns because that's how Pickett used to wrestle into the ground. So what kind of horn should we give this big ass cow? I'm thinking that they've got to be huge, chunky, spiky. Yeah, they've got to be like dangerous looking horns. I'm thinking Hellboy. Hellboy's when horns. horns grow back in the original film. And they go all the way back and they're like fucking like terrifyingly large and you can see why he snapped them off. Okay, so we're giving this cow Hellboy's horns, but it's like it needs to protect its flanks. So it needs to wear some armor. But what kind of armor can it wear? I'm thinking I'm going to take chunks from the Megazords. Yeah, that's really, it's not going to wear regular armor. It's going to wear something. It's going to wear like, do we wear like cow pelt, like leather? It's doing the same thing, but with our best defenders. So yeah, it's wearing, it's, as armor, the cow is now wearing chunks of the fucking Megazord because it destroyed them in its rampage and decided to like, turn them into the thing it protects itself with. Just chunks of the Megazords protecting this cow. <laughs> okay, and what else is the kit? Oh, we need more stuff for the I cow. I mean, if you want to add more threat, it could be breathing fire. It could be breathing fire, because we've now got a fire-breathing giant horned cow wearing the Megazord. <laughs> the most powerful enemies are always ones that are fighting for a cause. So what cause is this cow fighting for? I'm going to say all of cow kind. It's fighting, you know, for its brethren, all the ones that have been slaughtered, so, you know, make hamburgers and shit. So who should be, like, you know, the mascot for this cow? The one that's in the heavens observing it all go down. I'm going to think it has to be the laughing cow. Just the laughing cow is behind it, slightly faded away, laughing at the destruction being caused by this cow. It's like, yeah, that's right, you show who's what. What other, like, 
cow deities can be there in the pantheon observing the destruction. What about the cow from cow and chicken? Yes, that's there as well. Okay, we've got the cow from cow and chicken. We've got the laughing cow. Who else is in the pantheon of bovine destruction? Which movie is it where the cow does kung fu? Well, that cow, the cow from Kung Fury. No, Kung Fu. Uh, kung Pao. Kung Pao. The Kung Pao cow is also there observing the destruction that's about to unfold. It's raining milk. <laughs> Yeah, instead of like, like hellfire, it's milk from the sky. So it's like milk's right, like boiling hot, searing milk is raining down. And then giant daily triangles like flat like ninja stars at people. Can we put a sign in the foreground as well that says, now who's well done? Yeah, go for it, yeah. Cool. There we go. And I want you to do as well, the cow, in addition to like breathing fire, the giant cow, is also chewing on Ronald McDonald. It's like revenge <laughs> for, all the, for all his burger brethren that got killed. There we go. And that's the cow that Bill Pickett could fucking whoop the ass off. So how did Bill Pickett actually control these creatures? Well, what he did is he observed what the Bulldogs ranch hands would sometimes use. It did when they brought steers under control. And obviously, Bulldogs, like, they're pretty big, I suppose, like a medium-sized dog. It's like nothing compared to like a longhorn fucking steer. And what he'd noticed, like, this tiny creature, this tiny little like, bundle of, like, doggy fury could bring this thousand pound creature, like, to its knees and drag it to the ground by biting its bottom lip and then twisting which would cause the steer to roll over and land on the ground. And Bill Pickett reasoned that if a dog could do this, a man with big enough balls could also do it too. So how did he test this theory? We started on smaller cows and calves, like, you know, to perfect the technique, because starting with a full-grown long-horn steer straight away is stupid, even for a man like the Dusky Demon, because you don't step to a creature with medieval lances stuck to its forehead on your first day on the job, do you? You've got, to, you've got to work your way up to that. You've got to level up first. So what he did is he stayed down and he, he got some XP by fighting smaller cars and cows until he perfected the technique to the point where he could basically do it every time without fail and eventually got to the point where he could take down any steer, no matter how large, by riding alongside it on a horse and like obviously as fast as he could and then leaping over to the steer, grabbing it by the horns, swinging himself round to the front of the like, you know, the steer, biting its bottom lip and then wrestling it to the ground. Or to put it another way, he would jump over to the steer and then suplex it because obviously it involved like grabbing the steer's horns and then pulling his weight back as hard as he could while biting it to cause it to flip over, which looked like he was basically just suplexing it into like, you know, submission. And this is what he did like every fucking day as his job. So he jumped on its back. Yes. So basically swung around to its front and then oh, yeah. bit its lip. Yeah, while pulling back to force it off balance, which would then make it fall over, at which point when it's on the floor, he can bring it under control. Wow. Yeah, like God cow's not sitting too pretty now, is it? <laughs> so basically what you've given it now is just two handlebars. All that's going to happen there is going to be the suplex from the end of the Power Rangers movie, where it's like they suplex gold art into fucking Dunkin' Donuts, and it's just a small man suplexing the entire cow upside down. <laughs> it's just the idea that he saw this and went, I could do that. It's like, no, you can't. I like, no, I bet you can. And he just learned how to do it. And he perfected the technique to such a point where, I said, it became a sport because, as you can imagine, this was like quite an impressive feat and many people were willing to pay to see Bill Pickett do it. So he became like a standard at rodeos where they'd like showcase bulldogging, as he called it, like for the crowd. And before long, there were many imitators who wanted to copy this technique at like other rodeos. But like Bill Pickett is always remembered as like the guy who invented this sport, bulldogging or steer wrestling. So how did a man this utterly badass actually die? Well, not fucking steer wrestling, I can tell you that for free. And it's noted that like, after suplexing like cows and steers into oblivion for several like decades, he retired and obviously went back to being a ranch hand, like running his own little farm. And he died and he was kicked in the back of the head by a horse. And that like, sounds like a weird like bookend for such an awesome life. But I'm now thinking that it's got all the markings of a hit. It's like, what's the closest ally of the cow and the steer in the farm world? It's the horse. And it sounds pretty convenient that Bill Pickett, a man who was like been a ranch hand his entire fucking life, basically had like got that shit on lock, knew exactly what he was doing, was randomly killed by a horse of all things kicking in the back of the head when he wasn't looking. So you're thinking the cow was hired an ass acid? Yeah. Oh, that's too good. That's too good. If it was a donkey, that'd have been perfect. But the pun ends it, Brad. The pun ends it. Oh. So Brad, I'm actually quite surprised because during that entire conversation about wrestling cows, you never once brought up like your first and I'd say greatest Photoshop creation. 
The RKO. Oh, the RKO! The RKO. So people <laughs> who may be like your new fans or you've just not watched all of our back catalogue yet, we had a video about a year and a half ago now where we talked about cow tipping. And during a drunken conversation in that video, myself and Brad came up with the idea of RKOing, which is tipping a cow over and then seeking out like Randy Orton and RKOing it to the floor. And that was born as like a joke we made about oh, how stupid would it be if people did wrestling moves to cows. Fast forward a year later when I've researched an article, we found the guy who invented cow wrestling. So I'm now thinking, could Bill Pickett have actually done an RKO to a cow if he'd have known that it was a move that existed? Could he have taken down a steer by riding alongside it and instead of jumping to its back, just jumped in front of it and like positioned his shoulder underneath its jaw and then grabbed its lip with his hand and then pulled it down? It's like, is there a wrestling move he couldn't have done to a cow? What other wrestling move do you think Bill Pickett could have done to a cow if he didn't know it existed? Like, what would have been the coolest thing for him to do? Like, say you go, you go back 120 years into the past or whatever, this dude lived. You go to one of his like rodeo shows and he says, oh, here's Bill Pickett with Dusky Demon and his steer wrestling show. What move do you want to see him do to that like unsuspecting steer? What would make you get the most hat and lose your shit the hardest? Choke slam from horseback. <laughs> Choke slam from horseback. So the he steer rides like, up and he lifts it up and I. Oh. Oh, so like the steer like obviously like rears up to try and stop him and he jumps off the horse, catches it in a choke slam and boom, to the ground. Or alternately grabs it by the neck and drags it alongside the horse <laughs> like he's in a fucking anime and then jumps up and Raddle! I'm not thinking though, it's gonna drop. You can imagine, like, if he uses the momentum of the horse to build up, like, a sideways Izuna drop, like, reaches around the cow and just starts twirling and twirls towards, like, the edge of the arena and hits the cow. Because he could do it. We don't know. A pile driver. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, jumps in front of the cow, catches it. <gasps> but, oh, or, like, power bomb or something like that. Uh, like, sneaks up from behind. Oh, man, there's so much you could do. Just imagine for a moment, like, Bill Pickett, like, by some bizarre confluence that's got brought through time, and witness the WWE, imagine how much more awesome his like show would be. Like you go see it and you'd like Bill Pickett, well, he's Bill Pickett, the dusky demon himself, like for his steer wrestling show. And you hear the guy with the tannoy, like, oh, and Bill Pickett, he's, he's riding up behind the steer, he's jumped onto its back. It's like, is he gonna go for the patterns of Bill Pickett like lip bite? It's like, oh no, he appears to be removing one of his like, you know, his elbow pads. He's dancing on the steer's back, he's baying to the crowd, he's running backwards and forwards along its back. He's delivered the people's elbow to the steer. <laughs> and afterwards, he's got to pin it. <laughs> he pins the cow. Obviously, you've got to pin it. He's just lying over it like he's lying on top of a huge... No, like, no, uh, don't do that. He does like the, uh, the Undertaker pin when you put like, the foot on the chest and just go like that. Or the one finger pin. Brad, this idea is too good. There are too many hype moments from wrestling which we can just transplant Bill Pickett in a fucking long arm steer into. Like imagine like, the Mankind Undertaker Hell in a Cell match and he's just fucking Bill Pickett just throwing a cat at a steer <laughs> off the top of the Hell in a Cell. <laughs> and you've got Bill Pickett doing a Brock Lesnar and you've got the steer in a little wheelchair <laughs> and he comes out and pushes it down the stairs in front of his mum and he's just like a cow in an apron to go, no! <laughs> just Bill Pickett becomes like the ultimate WWE superstar and just every cow in the world fucking hates him because <laughs> all he does all day is just suplex, like belly to belly suplexing steers directly into a deep fat fryer. <laughs> It'd be like the coffin match but instead of a coffin it's just a fucking grill. <laughs> it's just lowering the cow into a grill. It's like, no! Or like, move!